Well, it's the Daily Horizon View Show. Welcome, Investaholics. Today's date is the 18th of the 10th, 2019. We are looking at our top five, see the exchange trade of funds on the AS of X. Our spotlight today is IIND, which is the beta shares. India quality ETF. Stick around for the end for that one. Um, it's a very, very new ETF. Uh, so it may be of interest if you're uh, looking at different themes to invest in. We are here to crack your financial sky. We want to give you information and demystify the world of finances. Okay, let's dive right into the top five ETS by percentage rise. MNRS number one, triple O, QR, bear. Rounding our top five is IIND. That's the spotlight, so stick around for that or skip to the end. Definitely worth uh, hanging around uh, or taking that in right now. Uh, we saw today a rise in the share price of M. NRS of 2.16%, uh, which equates to 10 cents on a pretty low volume of 425 shares traded. So for those who have forgotten, MNRS is the beta shares global gold mines ETF, and that one's currently hedged, and that one tracks the NASDAQ global ex Australia gold miners uh, uh, index. Uh, that one's Pretty small, it's about $12 million market cap. Top five ETFs by percentage falls. SLF, Asia, GIA, AUMF, and finally a VLC. So for those who have forgotten, it doesn't come up a great deal. SLF is the State Street Spider S&P ASX 200 listed property fund. Uh, this uh, ETF is set up to closely track uh, the returns of the S&P ASX 200A REIT index. Uh, market cap of roughly $650 million. Dividend yield is pretty healthy at 6.27%. Morningstar give this one a quite a high rating of silver, which is four out of five stars, if you want to think of it like that. We saw a fall today of 2.01%, which equates to 29 cents on a pretty healthy volume of 33,500 shares traded. Someone's getting out of a listed property. Top five, uh, e top five ETS by dollar rises. We're looking at QR. IHVV, IHHY, IHEB, and OOOOOOOOOOOOOOOOOOOOOOOOOOOOOOOOOOOOOOOOOOOOOOOOOOOOOOOOOOOOOOOOOOOOOOOOOOOOOOOOOOOOOOOOOOOOOOOOOOOO
we saw a, a drop in the share price of two dollars and sixty four cents which equates to 0.6 of a percent on a reasonably healthy volume of twelve thousand and twelve thousand eight hundred shares i should say which is not too bad So top five ETS by number of trades, we're looking at VAS, VAP, AAA, VTS, and IAF. So for those who have forgotten, VAS is the Vanguard Australian Shares Index ETF, and that one tracks the S&P ASX 300. That one has a market cap of roughly $3.5 billion. You get a dividend yield here, not too bad, of 4.45%. Uh, Morningstar give uh, VAS a bronze rating, which is effectively uh, three out of five stars. We saw quite a lot of trades for VAS go through today, 593 to be exact. On the downside, however, because we saw a fall in the share price of 48 cents, which equates to 0.57 uh, of a percent. Top five ETS by volume today, VSO, AAA, VAS, and IOZ rounding out there. We're looking at FAIR in the number five position. So VSO is the Vanguard MSCI Australia Small Companies Index. Uh, the index uh, generally consists of smaller companies uh, on the uh, Australian Stock Exchange. That one has a market cap of roughly uh, $273 million dividend yield, you'll see some money in your pocket at 2.97%. Uh, Morningstar give this a neutral rating, so it gets a very low rating. We saw 277,100 shares traded today, it's not too bad for uh, one of these smaller ETFs, or oh, some mid-size ETF I suppose. On the downside, though, we saw a fall in share price of 34 cents, or which equated to, I should say, um, 0.57 of a percent. Top five ETS by value. We're looking at VSO once again, VAS, AAA, STW, and VAP. So no surprises, we've seen V8, uh, sorry, VOS again, uh, looking at a value of shares trade today of $16.4 million. Okay, kids, let's dive right into the spotlight. I know everyone's been waiting around for it. Tongues hanging out, let's get into it. So we're looking at IIND, which is the Beta Shares India Quality ETF, uh, the fund aims to track the performance of uh, the index before the fees, blah, blah, blah. Provides exposure to a diversified portfolio of high quality Indian companies. So it provides access to the diversified, diversified portfolio of 30 high quality Indian companies based on combined rank of the following factors. So high profitability, low leverage and high earning stability. Why on earth would we bother? Uh, this ETF gives you some tactical exposure to India if that's what you're chasing. Uh, invest in the fast growing Indian economy. Um, we'll touch on that a little bit later. India is one of the fastest growing economies in the world uh, with uh, future growth potential underpinned by strong structural fundamentals. Might be a little bit subjective that one anyway, but we'll roll with it. Um, as, as we mentioned before, we get some portfolio diversification. Yeah, any equities returns have historically had relatively low correlation with both Australia and global equities. So if you're looking for some non-correlation in your asset um, portfolio, this might be an option for you. Uh, net asset value, we're looking at $8.46 when I checked last. We're looking at a... Close the share price today at $8.54, which is uh, just above the uh, net asset value. Market cap we're looking at, it's pretty small, it's quite a new uh, ETF, um, pretty much only on the boards in August this year, $11.3 million. Management cost I think is actually quite high at 0.8%. 
uh, semi-annual distribution that hasn't paid out yet um, because as I just mentioned it's a new ETF uh, targeted 1.5% distribution so India has a burgeoning middle-class population one of the largest in the world and the G GDP in the country is growing very fast India is now the second fastest growing economy uh, alongside China or behind China uh, the growth uh, is predicted to continue at a pace of around 7% for the next few years. I mean, that's according to the World Bank. India is the only uh, major Asian economy that has seen a share of its global export growth uh, rise, I should say, since the trade war has begun. Uh, I've always been a little bit skeptical, I suppose, or cautious about investing in India. Um, because at times it seems to be a country that struggles to live up to expectations for a multitude of reasons. One being the amount of corruption that's in India. You know, they don't seem to be able to get uh, infrastructure projects up and running. Um, you know, quality of, ass quality of assets, the infrastructure seems to be a bit um, suspect, I suppose, is, is a word for it, but something to you know keep an eye on and that and it definitely is an economy that's on the on the way up but how long it takes to get to a decent level um something we don't know until it gets there effectively as always we need to be doing our research um alternatives to iind uh ndia and also have a look at asia look to this because i've forgotten So looking at the uh, top 10 holdings here, pretty much the only companies I know or have heard of, I should say, are Tata. I don't know anything much about that specific subsidiary. Subsidiary uh, Nestle India, obviously there it's a large multinational company and that's the um, local Indian um, branch. But other than that, I don't know anything about those other companies. I mean, you've got Unilever there, sorry. So, you know, it's definitely something if you are interested in this type of um, ETF, you should always have a look at the top 10 companies and at least get an idea of who they are and what they do. I can also see Suzuki there, you know, so uh, the closer I look at it, the more brands start to pop out. But like I say, it's only been on the board since August. Um, not much of a track record. So do you want to invest in something that doesn't have a track record? I mean, that's something you need to consider. Last month it did 3.92%. Since inception, you're looking at 5.1%. Uh, so something to keep in mind. Not really something that I've been inclined to jump into uh, unless there was something major when it happened in India and, and Everything sort of started to tick over a lot, a lot better for the, the country. But something to do some research on, um, build up your knowledge of uh, this type of um, ETF theme. But like I said, not something that I'd, I'd be really bothered in looking at. G'day Valueholics. So just a quick reminder, the principal purpose of this post is to provide factual information and not provide financial product advice. Additionally, the information provided is not intended to provide any recommendation or opinion about any financial product. So what I'm saying is here, I don't understand your financial situation. And if you are unsure about your own personal finances, listen along to my videos a bit more, but it's always up to you guys, and if you need additional help, you should seek advice from a financial advisor. I'm not a financial advisor. Um, this is just what I do in my spare time. I research, I look at these things, and try to educate myself so I can make these decisions uh, for myself effectively. So if you're not that confident yet, you definitely make sure you need to get some additional advice from a licensed financial provider. Thanks for hanging around to the end of the video, Valeaholics. So my mission is to give you guys the tools, knowledge, and confidence uh, to go out there and take control of your own finances. I want to crack your financial sky. I think we can do that together. So we want to educate you guys, build your confidence. 
And most of all, I just want to have a bit of fun because these things can actually be fun. So learning about your finances uh, can be quite rewarding. Uh, yeah, I, I actually quite enjoy what I do. Um, it's a pleasure to bring it to you. So if you've got some sp a spare second, give us a thumbs up or subscribe even because that'd be fantastic to help me out with the YouTube algorithm. And pretty much primarily, um, you know, even if you don't do that, I just want to make sure I'm um, giving you guys some value. So have a great day, guys. Uh, invest on.